since 2003. This is the Sports Source, East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Presented by Junk Be Gone, Phoenix Conversions. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning. Welcome into the Sports Source. We appreciate you joining us on this sunny Sunday in July. Uh, we have a wild week in college athletics to discuss. Everything kind of uh, went crazy at the end of the week. Uh, we'll discuss what the conferences are doing. We'll talk about what uh, SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey said. And there's also some news this morning from uh, one of Tennessee's future opponents, non-conference opponents. We'll tell you what they're saying about their game with the Vols. All of that and a whole lot more in today's show, 90 minutes packed with information about college football season and what it will look like if we have it. Let's get right into it. First segment of our program is brought to you by Phoenix Conversions. If you are driving a truck, van, or SUV, there are these are the folks to turn to uh, for that new accessory. Whether it's an add-on for work or just something for your personal taste, they can do it. They can also convert any vehicle to make it handicap accessible. PhoenixConversions.com, you see the website right there. They're also on Facebook. Drop by and see them. These guys have been doing it since 1987. They are the best in the business. All right, I want to welcome in the first two members of today's panel we have right here, both of them from WNML. I can get that out of the way. From 99.1 The Sports Animal, we have Josh Ward, and right down there, Jimmy Himes. Gentlemen, thanks for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, not a great week. Well, this is two weeks in a row. For, we went for about a month there where it was, wow, this is surprisingly positive. And then the last two weeks have been somebody yanked the plug out of the drain, out of the uh, drain, and it's all kind of yeah, drifting been some away. Some other surprise positives. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so it's not been a great week. Let's catch you up on the news that I'm sure most of you have seen. Uh, the Big Ten announced this week that they will be going to a conference-only <coughs> schedule. Their commissioner actually added, "We may not have a college football season this season." Uh, Ohio State's athletic director made it very clear that the season is in doubt as well. I don't think that's news to anyone, but it is news that it's being stated and being stated emphatically. Pac-12 announced this week that it also would go conference only schedule. So uh, all of those non-conference games canceled. So right now, Alabama Southern Cal in terms of the SEC, not gonna happen because Pac-12 isn't going to play non-conference games. The ACC delayed all of their sports starting until September 1st. So they put a, uh, a delay on everything across the board. Former uh, UT assistant and current Duke head coach David Cutcliffe said that he believes a conference-only schedule that makes the most sense for this year. Their commissioner, while they haven't made an announcement yet, their commissioner did say if we go conference-only, Notre Dame will be rolled in probably to our scenario because they have that relationship already. So if you're thinking, ha-ha, this will be the end of Notre Dame, they're just going to roll in with the ACC apparently. Uh, if it comes to that. The Big 12 still waiting to make a decision. The SEC, the athletic directors will meet face mask to face mask tomorrow down in Alabama. <laughs> but SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey sounded a very serious warning yesterday on ESPN radio. And here were his comments. We put a medical advisory group together in early April with the question, what do we have to do to get back to activity? And they've been a big part of the conversation. But the direct reality is not good, and the notion that we're, we've politicized medical guidance and distancing and breathing masks and hand sanitation, ventilation of being outside, being careful where you are in buildings, there's some very clear advice about you can't mitigate and eliminate every risk, but how do you minimize the risk? We are running out of time to correct and get things right, and as a society, we owe it to each other to be as healthy as we can be. And Peter Burns of ESPN retweeted that. He, he tweeted out uh, Sankey's comments. And as if he wanted to say, darn right I said it, Greg Sankey retweeted that tweet saying, yep, that's exactly what I said and have been saying. I want to provide the opportunity for college athletics to be part of the fall, but we need to all consider our behavior to make possible what right now appears very difficult. The direct reality is not good. Okay, fast forward to this morning. Peter Burns, that same ESPN reporter, did radio and tweeted this. Um, that, um, on, yeah, let's see, Charlotte Football's athletic director, University of Charlotte's athletic director, tells us that he has talked to Tennessee officials even after the Big Ten's decision of conference-only games and that the plan is still to play their opener as scheduled. Okay, 
enough of the newscast. Let's bring in the panel here. Um, let's start with the Charlotte AD saying everything is on schedule. Is it, or is that just what you say right now? I guess it's what you say right now because, to my knowledge, Philip former Tennessee's athletic director, has continued to say they're planning to have 100,000 at Neyland Stadium. That's not happening. I think we all know that. The majority of sources I've talked to and the boosters I've talked to have said Tennessee's working on a plan for 25 to 33 percent capacity, but that's only one of their plans. They've got multiple plans, but that's what you say now. You haven't canceled anything, but you know darn well Tennessee isn't going to pack Neyland, and I would be surprised if Tennessee plays Charlotte. I would too, Josh. Uh, I would be surprised as well. Um, it's not bad news, so you'll take that right, right. and run with it if you can. But uh, the, the SEC, I'm, it, it's among the conferences right now planning on playing those non-conference games. And when that changes, because it probably will, they'll announce that. And that's probably when Charlotte's AD will find out. Uh, so uh, right now, what he's saying, I'm sure, is accurate. But that doesn't mean it's going to play out that way. Let's talk about uh, Greg Sankey's comments. Uh, that was about as forceful and straightforward as you can get. I'm a little surprised that the commissioner laid out. He, he's obviously aggravated that mm -hmm. people aren't doing what doctors and scientists are recommending. Uh, Philip Fulmer tweeted the same thing about a month ago, saying, hey, people keep asking, uh, are we going to have fans in, in Neyland Stadium? Here's the way to do it. Social distance, wear a mask. Uh, people aren't doing that. The way I look at this... It, if we don't have sports this fall with fans, and if some of those seasons are just canceled or shortened or whatever, we don't have anybody to blame but ourselves. And I'm looking at other countries where it's done this. It's the, the, the COVID thing has done this, whereas here it's doing this. And I know there's still some people out there, even in the sports media, who are trying to say it's still a hoax and it's nothing to worry about. Uh, I guess they haven't had anybody in their family die yet, but... Uh, I don't see any, any way, at this point, you can't even say, well, it's the virus. Other places have gotten the virus but more under control than we have. If we don't have football, and there are people already mad that Greg Sankey made these comments. If you don't have football, it's not Greg Sankey. It's not Philip Fulmer who's hurting it. It's we, the people, who've kind of not followed instructions. That's my take. Am I wrong? No, I, I think uh, we've had indirect comments saying, hey, this is going to be on you, and maybe it's more directly now with Greg Sankey, especially when he emphasized it. That's, that's a big deal, right? Uh, it's one thing to be on the, on the radio and you have some comments, and then we try to discuss, okay, what does it really mean? And he comes back and says, now I'm saying you really need to start making changes. That doesn't even guarantee football. Uh, but athletic directors, uh, we've talked about Philip Fulmer and, and his message. Is it something that Tennessee fans are going to listen to? Uh, Kirby Smart at Georgia, are his fans going to listen? And maybe some have, but not enough have probably. John, I said in May on our radio show that if you want to have college football this year, you need to abide by the guidelines. Now, sometimes the guidelines have changed a little bit, but uh, I, I just I am flabbergasted at the behavior of so many people, whether it's on the beach, whether it's in restaurants or bars, or hanging out together and infecting people at churches even. It's just uh, amazing to me to see this. But I agree with you. I think it's, it's our own fault if we don't have it. Look. The, the NHL was looking at hub cities to have the NHL playoffs, right? So what they do? They picked two in Canada. They couldn't even find a place in the United States that they felt safe to have the playoffs. And, and you look at uh, the NBA, who decided to put their bubble down at Disney World in the middle of Florida, where mm -hmm. things looked good a month ago. They don't look good now. Um, it's, uh, it's, I know that there are people who are saying, well, the English Premier League is playing. That's on TV constantly. And you've got things. In, there's, there's South Korean baseball on television. Why aren't we doing this? And the answer is it's just look at the COVID tracks. Uh, yeah. You mentioned that they were going to have uh, fans in the stands in South Korea, but they decided against it. And talk about the number of cases. Yeah, it was, it was bizarre. So th this is the week before they were going to have fans in the stands on a Friday. But then they had this outbreak. They went from like 41 to 42 to 52. And at 52, they said, no, nope, that's too many. We can't do this. My goodness, we have thousands of cases in Florida and Texas and California and all over the place. But when they had like 52 or 53, they said, that's too many. We've got to shut it down. So I, I thought, boy, that's a contrast to what we've got going on in the United States, isn't yeah. it? Well, you, you also have the, the challenge that comes with trying to schedule college, right? That, that's part of the reason that you're hearing even more. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's actually official with a couple of conferences and going conference only. But uh, what did you say? At least, at least in Disney, they're trying to create a bubble. Right. Mm -hmm. How do you create a college bubble? 
it, it's, it's essentially impossible. So uh, that mm -hmm. is another issue that they're just going to continue to face for the next couple of months and the rest of this year. And you're continuing to see more and more colleges announce that they're going to be online only in the fall, which also makes football and, and any fall semester sport a bigger question mark because if you're going, if you're telling students, hey, just stay home and do it online, but athletes, come on in here. We need the money that you make for us. That's tough. That's a bad optic. That, yeah. that, that doesn't look good at all. No. And we're seeing more and more of that. Uh, I remember uh, Sankey a while back said that uh, we need to have students uh, on campus. He said, but what that'll uh -huh. look like in the fall, I don't know. Yeah. Does that mean 20% of the students are taking in uh, on class courses, um, in class courses? I, I don't know. But that, I, I think it's, um, I, I am less optimistic about where we are right now. I guess I'm kind of following Sankey's line there. I'm less optimistic about us having college football now than I've ever been. Yeah, the decision makers are less optimistic. You know, yeah. You're right. I mean, you mentioned Gene Smith, Ohio State's athletic director, said, mm -hmm. I'm very concerned. Uh, so when Greg Sankey and the AD at Ohio State, a big football program, and uh, last week the AD at Penn State said the same thing. Well, an AD who went off the record with Sports Illustrated this week had a comment that's, that we'll show you later that makes it, makes it seem that he is very much more – he is more uh, tuned into what they could play in spring as opposed to now. He feels more safe about playing in the spring than he would playing in the fall. That's an SEC athletic director. We've got that. What about the players? How much voice should the players have? Because these, whereas pro players, some of them are saying, I'm out. College players are saying, I want to play. How much voice should players have? We've got a lot to cover. Come on back mm -hmm. on the sports list. We're going to talk about the conference-only option. If the SEC does it, what would it look like? What's the best way of doing it? Because it's not just playing, probably not just playing the schedule you've already seen and take out the non-conference games. It will probably mean changing dates, changing opponents. At least that's what other leagues are talking about. We'll discuss all that next. Come on back on the Sports Source.